Dear Mom. Dear Mom. Thank you for loving me and keeping me safe. Thank you for cleaning up the messes I make. Thanks for the hugs. Thanks for the hugs and kisses and prayers. And always making sure I had enough clean underwear. Do you remember the time I cut my own hair? Or scribbled on the wall? And swallowed a penny? That home that pet garden snake that I named Jenny? Oh, sorry. I forgot. This isn't my day. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Mom, I just want to say thank you for letting me play on your phone. I'm sorry that I cracked the screen. Thank you for all the yummy food you made. Except for those green beans. And Brussels sprouts? What was that about? <gasps> The cabbage, the spinach, yuck. You have to finish everything on your plate. You get no dessert. Hey, Mom, that hurt. That hurt. But I don't hold a grudge. Because you also made fudge. Cookies and cake. And a chocolate peanut butter milkshake. So good. Yeah. Mom, you're the very best mom there can be. Mmm. You're the best, Mom. And remember, you wouldn't be a mom if it wasn't for me. So thank you for being the world's greatest mother and loving me more than my sister and brother. I'm kidding. Kind of. And when I grow up, when I'm wiser and older, I'll still be the kid that cries on your shoulder. Who still runs to your side. Who still tells a bad joke. Who still asks you for money. Who still asks for money. Who still asks you for money because I'm still broke. I'm still broke. And you'll still be my mom. And that's something nothing will change. So happy Mother's Day. And I just want to say, you put up with a lot. Runny noses. Scraped knees. You always reminded me to say please. And thank you, you thought I'd never learn. You thought I'd never learn. You thought I'd never learn. Well, guess what, Mom? Now it's your turn. Thank you for loving me and keeping me safe. Thank you for cleaning up the messes. The messes I make. <laughs> thank you for the hugs, the kisses and prayers. And thank you. And thank you. Thank you for always being. Thank you for always being there. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Hey everyone, happy Mother's Day! I'm Bansley Allen, I just want to welcome you to First Orlando Online. We are so glad you're spending part of your weekend online with us. Since today is Mother's Day, I thought I'd take this special opportunity to share just a little embarrassing story about my mom. No y'all, I'm totally kidding. But I do want to wish my mom and all of our moms a happy Mother's Day. Mom, thank you for letting me be a part of a church family that is all about following Jesus and leading others to do the same, including kids like me. Now we know some of you are joining us for the first or even second time and are still getting to know First Orlando. So I want to invite you to click on the link on your screen or in the comment section and fill out our digital connect card if you haven't already. We would love the opportunity to pray for you and help you get connected to your best next step. Before we get started, we just want to share a special moment coming up later in the service. Take a look. While this is a great weekend for moms, we know that for some women, this is a difficult one. And maybe that's you today. Later in the service, we're gonna have a special time of prayer based on a passage of scripture from 1 Samuel called the prayer of Hannah. If you're facing the unmet desire of becoming a mom, we wanna pray for you today. This is something we do every year. And even this year, as we gather in homes all across our city and even the world, we wanna to come together in prayer. If you want to be prayed for by name, I want to ask you to simply drop your name in the comment section right now, wherever you're streaming. You don't have to, but if you feel comfortable, we would love to pray for you by name later in the service. We want you to know we are thinking of you today, and more than that, we want to pray for you today. Whether you're a mom, a dad, a son, or a daughter, we know God has something big in store for you today. So thank you again for joining us. In just a minute, Roberto and his team are going to lead us in some worship. Whether you wanna sit and ponder on the lyrics or whether you wanna stand and sing it out, however you feel led, let's join together this morning as we turn our hearts toward him. Thank you, Ansley Allen. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. You know, First Orlando, before we start singing, I just wanted to take a moment real quick and say thank you 
to all the churches who participated in the Orlando Blessing video last week. It was such an honor and a gift to partner with them. And one thing I love about our church is that we love people. And what a wonderful way to join together in unity with our brothers and sisters in Central Florida to pray a special blessing over our city. And let me tell you, this morning we've got another gift. We are about to start worship with some songs led by some of our wonderful worship leaders who also happen to be moms. So turn up the volume. Let's worship the God who loves us and who's with us and who is for us. for joining us this morning. We are here to worship a God who loves us, who cares for us, who is there for us. So we want to ask you, wherever you are, would you just ask the Lord to fill that space with His presence? God, we look to you. We look to you for strength. We look to you for peace, for protection, for comfort. God, we look to you. Give me 
As a mom, today is a day I know many of us look forward to, but I also know that for some, Mother's Day is hard. Many of us have walked with friends as they've struggled with infertility or miscarriage, or even as they wait for a child through the adoption process. This Mother's Day may come as yet another reminder to women everywhere that they don't have something they desire, and maybe that's you today. We want you to know we see you and we love you and we want to pray for you this morning. In just a minute, we're going to have a special time of prayer based on a passage of scripture from 1 Samuel called the prayer of Hannah. If you're struggling with the desire to become a mom, whatever that looks like for you, we want to take the next few moments to pray this prayer over you. We've had some women send in their names already this week. And if you want to be prayed for by name, you can also add your name in the comment section right now, wherever you're streaming from today. And for everyone else streaming with us, as the names come up on the screen or in the comment section, will you pick a few and pray specifically for them by name, wherever you are? We know that our God is near to the brokenhearted. And as we enter this time of prayer, we pray that you would feel the nearness of God today. So thank you, Sarah, for reminding us that one of the traditions that we have had here is to pray on this day, on Mother's Day, for anyone that that longs to be a mom that would ask God to grant them the opportunity to have a child. Now, I can tell you, if if you're streaming today and you've never been a part of this church, you might wonder, "What, what is this? I don't understand this. It's just simply the recognition that, as Sarah said, this is a hard day for a lot of ladies. And in fact, I've had them tell me over the years, uh, it's the one day I will not go to church, or it's the one day I don't want to hear Happy Mother's Day because of the sting. And we understand that, though we can't fully comprehend those of us who have children, ladies that are moms today. But I can tell you what your church will do and what we always do is we stand with you we pray for you and this is our opportunity to do that I I want to tell you it's going to be really really simple there's going to be a screen in front of you and you just pick some names and and pray for them and if you're able to see the comment section on the platform you're using pick some of the names that that come across that And just pray and ask God to open the womb. Let me tell you where it it comes from. This is not just some crazy thing we dreamed up. In the Old Testament, in the book of 1 Samuel, there's the story of how Samuel came to be. Literally, the reason there was a Samuel. His mom was named Hannah. And Hannah loved the Lord with all her heart. In the opening chapter, she is so burdened. I mean, just absolutely grieving. The fact that she was barren, that she had no children. And she was asking God. And she was at the temple, and and even the priest saw her and thought she was drunk. And she said, no, I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm overwhelmed. And I'm asking God to grant me the opportunity to be a mom, to give me a child. And so as the story goes, the priest joined in that. And in just a matter of time, the Lord blessed her and opened her womb and gave her a child. By the way, that child's name is Samuel, which means given from the Lord. And so here she is, and now she brings him back, and she gives him to the Lord and the work of the Lord when she wings him. And, and so he's a servant of God now. He's become one of the great leaders of Israel. The book, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, named after him. And it all started with a mom who was yet to be that. But she wanted desperately for a child to come to her. And so the prayer of Hannah is our opportunity to join you and to pray that very thing, that you would have the opportunity to be a mom. Now, as Sarah said, We're just asking God to open that door. It may be through you getting pregnant and delivering that child. It could be you have the most incredible opportunity and privilege to adopt. And we want to encourage you to consider that God would answer this in many ways. And let's just let him be God and answer it in whatever way he chooses. There have been some great stories of how he answered. 
And I believe God will continue to answer the prayers of his people. So would you join me as you're watching that screen? You don't have to close your eyes. I want you watching that screen. And I want you to pray. Pick some names out. And let's just ask them in the same way that Hannah did. Let's ask God to open the womb. Let's ask God to grant the opportunity to be a mom. So, Father, as we're staring at these names, they're just simply names. They're letters to us. Some of them we may know, but some of them we may not. But you know every one of them. In fact, you have heard their cry. You've seen every tear that's fallen, just like your servant Hannah. In your word, you have seen their distress. So God, is there any way that you would allow for them to have the most awesome privilege to be a mom? And Lord, if you choose to grant it through the birth of their child or through adoption, Lord, we just leave it up to you. You work it out in whatever way is best. Because, Lord, your ways are perfect. And your timing is always on time. And so, Lord, we're trusting you. And we're praying and we're asking you today on behalf of these families that, God, you would hear their cry. You would hear our prayer as we join them. And we simply ask, grant them life. Bless them to be a mom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Try.
again for joining us today. Just want to remind you to take a moment to fill out our digital connect card if you haven't already. Like I said earlier, I love being a part of a church family that is all about following Jesus and leading others to do the same. And next week, we have an exciting new way for you to learn more about that family at our online Discover Experience. Whether you've been around First Orlando for years or are just making your way here, this will be a fun way to meet other people, learn about following Jesus, and get connected. So make plans to join us. Finally, we just want to say thank you so much if you've already given. The mission has it stopped, and even in these times, your generosity helps make ministry in our city possible. If you haven't given, no worries, you still can. And one of the easiest ways to give is to just text GIVE to 40777. I'm going to pray for us and we'll continue in our service. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to gather together virtually from all around Orlando and all around the globe. And Lord, thank you for all these amazing mothers who have guided us every step of the way. And Lord, please help our community know how much the, our church community loves them and how much you love them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, to those of you streaming from all over the world, once again, thank you so much for being a part of uh, what's happening in these days with us and joining together on a special day. I, I got to be honest, uh, I was sure hoping we'd be together by Mother's Day. That was just kind of a prayer. I was praying, Lord, come on, let this thing just, you know, flatten the curve, whatever. You just got to just let us be together for Mother's Day. And, and I don't know why I picked Mother's Day. I think it was because I know how much it means to you. In fact, let me explain. I normally have jeans and a sport coat. <laughs> I have a suit. I haven't put a suit on in a while and tied a tie on. But I did it for mom. And not just my mom, but all the moms. I don't know. I just felt like I need to dress up today in some way trying to honor you. I know this probably doesn't help me much, but if I get a brownie point, hey, I'll, I'll take whatever I can get. Guys, this is a season where this is probably one of the most need, needed Mother's Day ever. I mean, think about it. Moms, what you have been through in the last couple of months, I, I cannot imagine it. I mean, literally, I cannot imagine it. I mean, I heard about one mom that she saw the bright, I mean, the good in this. She said, I finally saw something good in this whole thing, in, in the only, you know, distance learning and all of that. She said, I learned that the average five-year-old asks 437 questions a day. And I have learned that my five-year-old is above average. That's awesome. Maybe you've learned how to cut your husband's sandwiches in little shapes and designs. Or maybe you've learned how to plate lunch and breakfast and dinner with food that doesn't touch each other. I mean, I don't know what it is that, that you have learned through this season, but I can tell you, you have been in an incredible place with everything placed upon you. That now, not only mom, not only wife, you have become teacher. And everything has been dumped in your lap. And if there was ever a day we need to say thank you, we need to encourage you, it's today that we want to reach out because we think that even though you're smiling and even though you're, you're on the outside, it's all good, everything's great, we think maybe on the inside it might be like this woman's video. Hi, everybody. Just thought I'd give you a quick update. Um, I think we're on day, I don't know, whatever day it is. Uh, but I just want to tell you that here at home, we're just having such a great time. Everybody is just 
wonderful. They, um, you know, we get up in the morning and we're just so fortunate with uh, how well we get along and spending all this time together. Uh, I mean, we're, we're doing puzzles, we're, we're helping each other. Um, you know, in times like this, it just brings everybody um, close to the next level. You know, the kids are in their 20s. I've been married to Charlie uh, for, I don't know, 28 years. And I, I just can't, I'm just overwhelmed with um, appreciation of who we are um, as a family. And I just cannot wait for the, uh, the next four weeks that we're just gonna be here at home. And I'm just really fortunate. So I thought I'd give you a quick update. So moms, my goal and our goal today is to give help, to give encouragement. And, and I know you're gonna be, <laughs> when you hear the text, you hear the passage of scripture that I've chosen, <laughs> If, we, if you were in the room, you might want to leave the room. Here, here's the text, Proverbs 31. Now, if you know anything about the Bible, if you know anything about Scripture, Proverbs is the book of wisdom. It's written by Solomon, the wisest man of all time. And he writes this book, and he concludes it with chapter 31, in which he describes a woman. Now, he had a lot of wives. Okay, you got to keep that in mind. Solomon had a lot of wives a lot of servants. He speaks to the fact that a woman is this incredible super mom. I mean, literally, it reads like a superhero. And, and I, want, I want to make sure, I want to caution you. From verse 10 through the end of the chapter, if you've got a Bible, if you've got a device, if you've got a way to go to it, it's right in the middle of the Bible. It's right after Psalms. And, and see if you can find Psalm 31. Uh, ladies, some of you know it. You know exactly where it is. because The thought of being compared to this woman is horrifying to you. But trust me, I'm not going to compare you to her. And that's not the point of this. In fact, I, I think you're going to end up with me and you're going to be encouraged. And we see those signs for help. And I believe that God has a word for you, an encouraging word for you. What you need to remember is verse 10 through the end of this chapter is an epilogue. Epilogue just means final words, okay? The epilogue. Now, it is in the style of Hebrew, Hebrew poetry. They would use the first letter to start the sentence, they would use a different letter of the alphabet. So using the Hebrew alphabet, they would write using each letter to begin the next thought or the next sentence. This is exactly what's happened. And the reason they would do that is because it would help you remember it. And what I believe is happening here is that it is this beautiful description in their culture, in their setting of moms and, and, and women and, and just the value and the incredible honor that ought to be given to women. Now, I want us to drill down just for a second with the whole book open and the chapter open. Would you just start with verse 28 with me? Because it's in verse 28 that everything kind of changes and moves. In fact, let me tell you something. There's only one thing in here that somebody's told to do something. And guess what? Moms, it's not you. He doesn't tell you to do this and do that. No, no, no. He tells us. The command is for us. And the command is to honor you. And to give thanks for you. So watch. Verse 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands. Let her works praise her in the gates. Now let me give you some thoughts, mom, on this Mother's Day. Number one, 
No mom can do everything. This was not written to say you need to do all these things. It wasn't. The first thing, it, it's not prescriptive, it's descriptive. Which basically means it's describing different women. And the only prescriptive in it, the only admonition is for us to do something to honor you. The second thing, it's not about one woman. It's about many. I mean, literally, it's about many. You take verses 10 through verse 27, that's, it's describing all kinds of women. But verse 27 gives us a clue, and I, I want to, I know we didn't read it, but verse 27 says this, she looks well to the ways of her household. You know what I think that means? You don't worry about somebody else's household and trying to be like them. Just because another woman sold a field and bought a field, just because another woman made all the garments for her children. I mean, literally, there are all kinds of incredible things in this chapter. You look after the ways of your household. You know the ways of your household. I think one of the most deadly things that happens today, especially with social media, is we compare. And mom, some of you are going through that even now with the quarantine and all that's happening and distance learning. You, you, you feel like, man, I've just failed my kids. I've failed everything. Because you're reading about moms that all of a sudden made a wardrobe. They, they sewed a new wardrobe for their kids or they knitted or, you know, or they crocheted something or they remodeled the house or they overhauled the engine in the car. I mean, you see these crazy things that make you feel like I did nothing. I mean, I couldn't even get through a math lesson. But you know your family. Look well to the ways of your family. And don't let others trap you in that thought of, you're not like them. You're not as good as them. Yeah, you are. Because it's not about them. Then, he says, in verse 28, he moves and he changes kind of the idea, which I think brings us to the key of the whole chapter, and that's verse 30. Verse 30 basically is the key, charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she is to be praised. Verse 28 says, her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, he praises her. All right, now let's think about that a moment. Charm is deceitful. The Hebrew word for charm basically meant to pretend. It meant to turn on, I mean, just like our sense of the word charm, turn on the charm. You pretend to be somebody you're not. You know, the most beautiful thing about you, Mom, is you. Being you, being real. Not trying to cover with charm, but literally letting the real you come through because God made you that way. God gifted you that way. So charm can be deceptive. You end up asking the question, well, which mom is she? The one we see on this day or the one we see other days? Charm is deceptive. Beauty is in vain. You know what that means? It's actually the word fleeting. Most translations will use the word fleeting, like a time reference. It basically means beauty, it's here one minute, it's gone the next. I mean, it doesn't last. I, 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 I can just tell you, beauty is a moving target. Here's why. Not only does it not last, but it's relative. What I mean by that, what's beautiful to somebody is not beautiful to somebody else. I mean, think about it. I, I remember being in Africa, and I was with my interpreter, and when we were in Africa, all of our family was there, and, and we got to know the interpreter so well. Mine was named Barnabas, a wonderful young man, had a wife and, and two, uh, two children. And we were just talking one day. We were just kind of chilling, and, and, and I told him, I said, you've got a wonderful wife, a lovely wife. And, and I said, she's beautiful, and your kids are beautiful. You've just got a great situation. And he made a statement like, yes, my wife's legs are big. And I said, excuse me? And he goes, yeah, she's beautiful. I said, wait a minute. Wait, what defines beauty in a man's eyes here in Zambia, in the bush of Africa? He said, oh, that's real simple. The bigger her legs, the bigger her thighs. Well, I'm trying to process that. I'm trying to think, I, I mean, I, don't, I come from a country that's a little different than that. Why is that beautiful? He said, 
Because she can carry more water from the river. She can carry more stuff. She can work harder. And I'm like, oh, now I understand how you define beauty. It's whoever can work the hardest. You see what I mean? Beauty is a moving target. And so it's in vain that you center your life around it and you try your best to be that. No, no mom can do everything. But listen, every mom can do the main thing. You follow? No mom can do everything, but every mom, you can do the main thing. And what is it? A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And every mom that is listening, every mom that's streaming in this moment, you can do that. Every mom can do this. And so the word fear of the Lord, what does that mean? It doesn't mean afraid of him, run from him. That's one use of the word fear. It's like terror. But this use of the word fear means first of, first of all to, to recognize that the creator of the heavens and the earth is with you. Did you know the word actually has the connotation of recognizing there is somebody there? That's what it means to fear. It means to have this incredible sense of awe that somebody is there. There is somebody there with you. It's the God who created the heavens and the earth. It's the one who made you. And by the way, it's the one who gave you every child you have. And it's the one who loved them before he gave them to you. And it's the one who loves them far more than you ever could. You've got to recognize he's there. Second thing fear of the Lord means is realize he alone is God. You are not. He alone is God. You are not. To fear the Lord means you get out of his way. Literally, it means you, you get out of his way. You're not super mom. And you have to confess that and come to, to grips with that and be comfortable with that. Even Paul says, it's in my weakness that he's made strong. Mom, it's in your weakness that he is made strong. But that's not what we're told. That's not what we hear in the culture around us. In fact, there's a book written by Philip Slater, and it's called The Pursuit of Loneliness. He, he basically describes soccer moms, and he says, this is the general feeling of, of moms, and I would say moms in general. You ready? That everything depends on them doing a good job with their kids. And if they do a good job with their kids, all of their children would be creative, intelligent, kind, generous, happy, brave, spontaneous, and good. And if they don't do their job well, they won't. Now listen to that. It's like it's all up to you. If you don't do your job well, your kids aren't going to turn out well. Can you imagine the pressure? You know the pressure. You feel that pressure. What mom haven't, hasn't had the sense of, I just, I should have done something different or I didn't do enough? I mean, Rachel and I had that conversation yesterday. We were just talking about being a mom, talking about my mom, and it, it's just crazy. And especially moms, when you've had everything dumped in your lap, now you're mom and your wife and your teacher. <laughs> you are the teacher now. I saw this son held up by a mom on day two of distance learning. Day two of homeschooling. Here's what she said. Wondering how I can get a kid transferred out of my class. That is the truth. And some moms feel that. But I want to encourage you. It's not up to you. Is there something for you to do? Yes, fear the Lord. What does that mean? Recognize that he is God and you are not. And you know what? Trust him. If he is, trust him. Fear of the Lord means you trust him. It means you say, okay, I can do this. I can turn it over to him. I can fear him. I, I can bring it to him, and I can trust him. Martin Luther, the reformer, used to tell Erasmus was a name that he was a humanistic, brilliant man, but very humanistic. And, and Luther used to tell him, your God is too manlike. And Luther would say, let God be God. Can I just tell you, let God be God? In your home? Piper wrote about this, what it means for a woman to fear the Lord. He said, a woman who fears the Lord 
will not run away from God to satisfy her longings and to relieve her anxieties. She will wait for the Lord. She will hope in God. She will stay close to the heart of God and trust in his promise. The benefits of abiding in the shadow of the Almighty, too glorious to forsake. So mom, you can't do everything, but you can do the main thing. Fear of the Lord. Did you know that's how the book of Proverbs started? It started off with this grand idea that if you want to be wise, fear the Lord, for that's the beginning of wisdom. That's where it all starts, that's where it all ends. Fear the Lord. And when you do, the scripture tells us to praise you, the scripture tells us to honor you, to give thanks for you. And that's what this day is all about. Moms, fear the Lord. Yeah, charm, it's a little deceptive. Beauty comes and goes. But when you fear the Lord, oh my, it lasts forever. You are the woman to be praised. So let me tell you a story about a young lady who met a guy to dance. This guy was riding a Harley Davidson when she met him. Came from a family that basically the father was an atheist. And he was a little bit on the wild side. Got into fights a lot. In fact, he carried a scar right down the middle of his face from a fight he got into and a guy cut him. And they fell in love, much to the dismay of her mom and dad. But they fell in love, and they married. And oh my, he was an alcoholic. He would lose everything they made gambling. And now she has two children. She's expecting the third, and she doesn't know what she's going to do. She's living a life trying to please her mom, who's very disappointed in her choice, and she's trying to please a husband that was very difficult to please. And she's working as hard as she can to make ends meet for two kids and soon a third. You know what? All of her child-rearing days she worked. In fact, there was never a year or never months that she wasn't working to try to make it. There were seasons when she was alone because he was away during the week and would come home on weekends. And yet she never quit. She believed. She feared the Lord. She did everything she could. Did she feel like she got it right? No. No. But did she? Yeah. Because you know what? The Lord honored her. He honored her faith. He honored her faith by bringing her husband to Christ. And not only bringing him to Christ, but calling him into ministry to be a pastor. The Lord honored her with all three kids following Jesus. And the Lord honored her by always meeting the needs. They never had much. They were very poor. But she never quit fearing the Lord and believing. And today, I'll call her and I'll say, thank you, Mom, for what you did. You didn't do what every mom can do, but you did what every mom must do. You feared the Lord. Thank you, Mom. She's 91, almost 91 now. And I love her dearly, and I thank God she's my mom. I want to encourage you to do the same with your mom. Some of you are walking through the first Mother's Day without mom, and let me tell you, that hurt, that pain is so deep. Could you just thank Jesus right now that you had a wonderful mom?
And even if you didn't have a, a, a good experience with mom, it's always an opportunity to pray for her. If she's still with us. If she's with us, I, you got to call her. You got to reach out to her. You got to praise her. You got to thank her. Was everything she did right? No. But neither is everything we do right. But thank her for fearing the Lord. Thank her for having faith. And maybe she's with you right now. She's in the room. Thank her. Because I can tell you something. Proverbs 31 is not mostly about a super mom. It's about us. Making sure we give thanks and we praise her for fearing the Lord. I believe it's every mom's heart desire to leave a testimony. And there's a song you're going to hear right now. Moms, it's for you, but it's for all of you. It just says, if my heart could tell a story, if my life would sing a song, if I have a testimony, if I have anything at all, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. His faithful hand has held me all this way. And when I'm old and gray and all my days are numbered on this earth, let it be known in you alone my joy was found. Mom, let it be Jesus and Him alone. Your greatest joy is found. Would you just enjoy this moment as we wish all of you moms a wonderful blessed Mother's Day. May you be praised. Jesus is faithful.
treasured today. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. We'll see you next week.